I received a personal request from a YouTube viewer named Joan. She was interested in making an apron to use when collecting eggs from her chickens. Although she had no problem with the apron construction, she was looking for a pattern that would work for the egg pockets. I don't know if such a pattern exists, but I was more than willing to give it a go and design something for her. In order to show the pocket construction, I decided that I would also give you the information you need to construct the apron, too. I'm not providing a printed pattern on the website for this project. Instead, I'm going to teach you how to make all the patterns yourself. Although there are more and more people with chickens these days, I realize that it's not a need for everyone. However, the construction techniques used in the egg pockets apply to many, many other projects. For example, you could use these same instructions to make a custom shoe holder that hangs in your closet, or you could make the pockets out of plastic and use it in the shower for shampoo and other items. We are all looking for storage solutions to hold all of our stuff. This design is extremely versatile and will allow you to make custom sized pockets to store anything you need. The pockets can be attached to a straight piece of fabric and hung in the closet or on a wall. You can mount them anywhere you need to. To begin, we're going to work on the apron pattern. We'll need these dimensions as we move on to the pockets themselves. The first thing you need to do is determine the width of the apron. Hold a measure tape around your waist front and decide how wide the apron will be. Next, hold the tape at your waist and let it drop to the floor. Now determine how long you want the apron. Slightly above the knee is generally a good choice. Make a note of the distance. You'll also need to know how long the tie needs to be around the waist. Take a piece of rope or cord and wrap it around your waist and tie a bow. Now use your measuring tape to measure how long your cord is. I have chosen to use metric throughout this lesson. I don't like fussing with inches and their bizarre fractions. If you want to convert anything, just remember that there are 2.54 centimeters to every inch. Now let's begin the project pattern layouts. I've taken the measurements for myself and that's what I'm going to be using through these calculations. So you'll want to substitute your own numbers uh, for the ones that I have here. I have a 30 inch waist and I'm 5'4". So if you're anywhere around there then this probably would be just fine for you. It's pretty much an average. So I determined that I wanted my apron to be 45 centimeters long from the waist down and it would be 50 centimeters wide. So that's what's here in this illustration. The next thing that we need to do is determine the seam allowances that are needed. So I've got a one centimeter seam allowance on all sides. You can see the red here. So we have um, to add one centimeter all the way around. So the results of that then would be on our length, 45 plus 1 plus 1, we have 47 centimeters in length, and 50 centimeters wide plus 1 plus 1 is 52. So we need a piece of fabric that's 52 by 47 centimeters. Now we're not going to do any binding on the edge of this. Uh, Joan said that she likes to use two pieces of fabric and not fuss with the binding. So we're going to use her same method. So you'll want to go ahead and cut two this size and we're going to just sew them together. It'll make it a little bit more sturdy. Now we're going to work on the apron tie and I've determined that mine needs to be 200 centimeters long and I think five centimeters wide is a really nice width for a waist tie on an apron. So that's what I'm going to use. Rather than using two pieces of fabric and sewing them together like we are in the apron body, for the tie it's a lot easier to go ahead and just make it a little bit wider and fold it in half. So that's what you see here. We have a fold line now that goes down the center and instead of 5 centimeters wide, now we're 10 centimeters wide. The seam allowance for the apron tie, again, would be 1 centimeter to each side. So you can see those have been written in here. Now we can determine the overall size of the pattern. We have 10 centimeters wide plus the two seam allowances is 12 and 200 centimeters long plus 2 is 202. So
So our piece will be 202 centimeters by 12 centimeters and we'll cut one for the tie. Now we need to work on the pockets and this is going to be kind of a multi-step process. So hang in there with me. It's going to be a little strange but you'll understand what I'm doing here in a second. So this apron is going to have five pockets running horizontally and there will actually be two rows of them. Joan indicated that she wanted about 10 eggs. So we're going to do uh, two rows of pockets. But there's one illustrated here so we can figure out how big they need to be. The finished width of each pocket is 8 centimeters. So those are shown across here. So now we need to determine how much extra fabric is going to be hanging out the edge to reach the end of the apron on each side. We know that we have five pockets each and they're eight centimeters wide so that's 40 centimeters. Our apron is 52 centimeters which does include the seam allowances minus the 40 centimeters for the pockets which leaves 12 excess and we divide that by two to put it evenly on each edge. So what we end up with is six millimeter or six centimeters of fabric here are five pockets and six centimeters off the end. Now we can determine what size piece of fabric we need to make those pockets. And here you see the six centimeters that we just calculated because we know we need that on the ends to reach to the edge of our apron. Now the pockets have pleats in them, so unfinished, which means the pleat would be open, each pocket is 12 centimeters wide by 12 centimeters high. So those are shown across here. To determine the piece of fabric size that we need, we've got five pockets that are 12 centimeters each which is 60 and 60 plus the excess 12 is 72 centimeters. So if you took a calculator and started at the left and did 6, 12, 12, 12, 5 times and 6 it would equal the 72. And we know that the height unfinished is 12 centimeters. So we need a piece of fabric that is 72 centimeters wide by 12 centimeters high and we are making two rows of pockets so we need to cut two pieces. Now I have all the pieces cut out and what I chose to do was just to use a marking pencil right on the fabric instead of actually making patterns and then using them because it's just a bunch of rectangles and I think it's easier just to do it with a marker and a ruler. I'm just using muslin. Um, it's actually fine for this project if you have some it'll work great unless you want to use some cotton and do something a little bit more decorative. But here's all the pieces as you can see I've got two um, apron bodies here and I've got two pockets and here's the tie. So for right now I'm going to set aside the body and the tie and we're just going to get started here on the pockets. So the first thing that we want to do is this hem across the very top of the pocket. So go ahead and take it over to the ironing board, press under uh, one centimeter on the top and then take it over to the sewing machine and just sew that down. Alright, the tops of both of my pockets are sewn down. I was goofing around and used a fancy stitch on the top of mine and this is a great opportunity if you're using really boring plain fabric like muslin go ahead and um, take advantage of any decorative stitches your machine has. So let's take a look at what we need to do now. We need to mark off all the edges for the pleats that we're going to make. We can take a look at the diagram here and see that 
our box pleat pocket construction consists of four centimeters over, then we have a little pleat, and then another pleat, and then four centimeters. So this is what we're going to mark out so that we can do this. We know that from the edge of our apron, we have six centimeters in excess. We calculated that. So that's the first thing we want to mark. I'm going to mark six, and then I'm going to draw a line here. Okay, now following our diagram, we know that there is four centimeters and then we have a series of four one centimeter marks. So I'll do one, two, three, four, and then four centimeters to the outside edge. And you'll see on the ruler that I'm at 12. And that's what the total is. Now I'm going to go ahead and mark 12 up here so that I can draw another line. There's one complete pocket. Now on my other one I went through and I did all of them and you can see all the little marks down at the bottom and when I got finished I did actually have six on this end so you have a way to verify uh, it should be six on the ends and each of these blocks is 12. And then here's what the center looks like. Once you have all the marks made, now it's time to actually make the little box pleat. Now I've indicated on this how you would want to do the folding. So the first line is an outside fold. And I'm going to do it right here on this paper so you can see. So an outside fold means this way. And the next fold is an inside fold. So that would be this way. And then the gray line in the middle is where you would bring the fold to. So there's half of the pleat. And then you would just repeat it for the other side. Inside to the middle. And there is a completed box pleat. So that's what we need to do on our fabric. Now we'll do the same thing here on the fabric. We know the first line is out. The next line is in. And we bring it to the center. And then just pin it. Try to keep the bottom square. Okay, for the other side, the outside one is out, then in, and bring it to the center. This is hard to do and keep it in the camera. <laughs> It's kind of sloppy, but you get the idea. That's what you'll want to do all the way down the length of the entire piece, is to go ahead and make these little box pleats. And then once you have them pinned out, take it over to the ironing board and press it really well. Make sure that it's folded properly all the way up to the top and give it a really good pressing. I decided that pinning them is actually not the easiest way to do this, so I thought I'd show you what I was doing over here at the ironing board. 
these little things are called wonder clips if you have them they work really good for this but it's much easier just to work over here and to line everything up and then press it do another one here the other side and then once you have it pressed out you can pin it if you don't have any of these little clips but these work really good so that's what I've decided is the easiest process for this once you have your pleats all pressed out then what you want to do is go ahead and put a line of basting in one centimeter off of the bottom so it will look something like this and then once you have that basting you can go over to the ironing board and press right along the line to turn it up there is the finished pocket row now one thing that you do want to be cautious of before you do the basting is go ahead and measure it real quick to make sure down here at the bottom that your length is the same as your apron body because if you got a little too aggressive with your pleats uh, it might be a little bit short and short is not good um, if it's a little long it's no big deal but if it's short you won't reach the full length of your apron so you might want to just verify after you do all your pressing that um, your length hasn't gotten off somehow but now we're ready to go ahead and put these on the apron body itself. We just take one of our aprons. This is going to be the front. And place the pocket along where you want it to go. and I have it in the wrong direction. <laughs> thought something was wrong. Okay, that looks better. So you'll want to place your pockets across the front. Whatever distance you find works the best for you. Something like that would be pretty good. And then uh, this one still needs to be pressed under. But once you have them laid out, then go ahead and take a tape or a ruler and measure down from the top so your lines are nice and square. And then you can just go over to the sewing machine and stitch right across the bottom to get those in place. And it would be a good idea to go ahead and baste down here on the edges. Now I have all the pockets sewn on the front down here at the bottom and if your basting is showing, obviously I used green, but uh, you can pull that out now if you'd like to. So the next thing we need to do is take the other <clears throat> apron body, which is the back of our apron. and we want to put right sides together pin the back to the front and then using a one centimeter seam allowance so down both sides and across the bottom leave the top open once you have the seam sewn on the side and the bottom trim the excess seam allowance and clip the corner and then turn it right side out and press it really well around the edges and then go ahead and run a line of basting across the top to hold those two pieces together now what we need to do is sew these individual lines that separate the pockets and the easiest way to get these ready is to take a ruler and look at the bottom of each of the two pockets with, that are sewn, line the ruler up 
and then adjust the top so that the line that you drew is straight. And then slip a pin in to hold it in position. And repeat that all the way across for all the lines. And then what you'll want to do is take a stray stitch and stitch down each of these. You want to take a couple um, back stitches up at the top so that the top is held very securely because that's where you're going to be tugging on it to put the eggs in. So back stitch up here, come down uh, and meet your stitching line here. And then if you want to do a really nice job, pull the tails to the back and then clip them off. So you'll want to sew a line for each of these all the way across. Now that you have the dividers for the pockets all sewn into place, we need to attach the tie. And the easiest way to do that is to fold the apron body in half and mark where the center is. And then take your long tie and find its center. Then match up center to center and put a pin just outside the width of the apron on the tie. Now take your tie and putting your right sides together, go ahead and pin it down and sew the corner, the edge and the top to your pin and then do the same on the other end, leaving this area unsewn between your two pins here and trim the seam allowance, cut the corner, and turn it right side out and press it. The ties all sewn up and turned and pressed. Now all we need to do is attach it to the apron body. To attach it to the apron body, we have our center of the tie and you want to put right sides together like this and pin the body to the tie and then take it over to your sewing machine and sew your one centimeter seam here now that the apron tie is sewn to the body there in the front all you have to do is press under the seam allowance on the other side of the tie and then fold it to the inside like that. So you see it's nice and finished on the outside. And then here on the inside you can just uh, do a hand stitch to stitch that down in the back or if you're brave you can stitch in the ditch on the front and catch that, whichever method you're the most comfortable with. So now the big question, the apron's all complete, is does it actually work? Well I don't have any chickens but I do have some eggs here and as you can see it's very simple to drop the eggs in the pockets and they fit really well and I think you could even get larger you know these are just standard store eggs but there's plenty of room in there and I think the pockets are high enough that um, it's not a concern that the eggs will pop out in the process of walking around or even you know bending over I think they're quite safe and they have a good distance between them so they're not going to be cracking into each other so I think this is a great solution for collecting eggs. It's uh, good for 
any gender. I think it's not horribly feminine. Um, anybody who needs to go out and pick up eggs would appreciate it. One thing that Joan did mention is that uh, she wanted something to go over her outerwear clothing. So if you're making this to go over big bulky coats or things for in the winter, make sure to keep that in mind when you measure for your waistband. But there's our little egg collection apron. And I want to say thank you very much to Joan for suggesting this and allowing me to come up with a solution. It was actually a lot of fun.